Hello everybody, my name is Daniel o. I'm working for Red Hat as a technical marketing major. In this tutorial and video, I'm going to show you and teach you how to deploy Quarkus application to a Red Hat OpenShift container platform. This is uh, the last uh, series of the uh, Quarkus application uh, development and deployment. So the, I just keep you remind that uh, the previous uh, tutorial about Quarkus application development and uh, debugging and testing. So first, uh, first tutorial we learned about how to test your Quarkus application on your local environment, and then uh, we learned about how to debugging uh, your application if you got some uh, uh, wrong result without any exception. So in the time you can use Quarkus debugging functionality uh, to fix that problem, and then. Uh, we can deploy our uh, Quarkus application into Kubernetes cluster using uh, Quarkus Kubernetes extension. And then uh, now we're going to deploy Quarkus application different uh, Kubernetes cluster, the named OpenShift container platform. Uh, we're going to use OpenShift uh, web console uh, named the dev console to make it easier and make it uh, comparable for developer standpoint. Let's get started. So the first thing is you need to pull down uh, Quarkus uh, OpenShift extension. Just Quarkus dash OpenShift, you can use that, uh, the Quarkus tool on your VS Code or any ID tool like NetBeans and IntelliJ and Eclipse. And then after that, you can put into some uh, required configuration file on your application properties and then just run uh, Maven package command line. So here's just a couple of examples of, of uh, how to configure your uh, OpenShift uh, resources. For example, you can uh, set it up uh, the, the Kubernetes certificate as a trusted certificate and a true and false. So if you use the uh, set sub, uh, certificate when you access the OpenShift web console and you need to uh, set it up uh, true uh, or a false, uh, whatever you need. And also, uh, during the Maven uh, package command line, you need to build uh, container images and uh, deploy the Kubernetes cluster, but target Kubernetes cluster is OpenShift, which means the uh, Quarkus uh, automatically generate the OpenShift resources, such as the service uh, name and service account and the deployment config and the router image stream etc. I mean, I'm going to show you that thing uh, during the demo and then you can put in the runtime like Quarkus and also you can uh, specify the base JVM image based on OpenJDK 11. And also you can deploy a native executable file with the source to image uh, feature by OpenShift container platform. And uh, one of the beauty of this feature, you don't need to Docker file. And you can use the, uh, the OC new dash app command line and we just specify uh, the base image like a JDK, the J, J, Java 11. And also you can specify uh, the source code repository where uh, S2I builder reports the your source code like a github.com etc. And once you uh, complete, uh, once the build complete, you can expose your OpenShift service object and then you can access the uh, loud URL uh, publicly by external system or end user. So. Let's get started the demo. I'm going to start the present mode first. And here is my ID too. So I'm going to use uh, the same application, Quarkus Getting Started. And uh, you already, if you already watched the previous tutorial and video, and uh, you can understand uh, uh, what kind of functionality this application have. But uh, just in case you uh, uh, you don't have any chance to watch the previous video, and uh, I'm going to. Uh, explain uh, what this application has kind of functionality. Okay, here the resource uh, to expose is a couple of less for API based on hello pass and uh, we're going to use the uh, CDI injection uh, to call uh, specific uh, service like a return hello with a parameter like a name like a hello Daniel and hello workers and a hello everybody and then back to the, the resource 
uh, the class and they are uh, just the return hello the static code and uh, with the, the parameter parameter like a greeting name also uh, another RESTful API and uh, endpoint is the last letter with the parameter and uh, we can uh, pick it up the last letter within the parameter string and in order to, uh, before we deploy this application we can put in the, some uh, required uh, uh, open shift configuration here something like that but first thing is first we're gonna add the open shift uh, extension here so let's search it to open shift and now you're gonna open shift extension and just return and uh, this uh, maven uh, command line automatically uh, put you pull down new dependency on your palm xml let's double check if new uh, dependency is pulled down here we got it here so Quarkus to Quarkus dash open shift to extension is just pulled down and back to the application properly so say uh, all required that thing and what about the next so let's make sure my local environment my laptop is already logged in in open shift to con container platform uh, using the OC um, what I say was OC who am I Okay, I got that here, and uh, let's go to open the web console, specifically Dev Console. So go to Dev Console. Let's say I am a Java developer. The first thing is I need to create my own namespace, uh, name the project. So create a new project here. Uh, uh, what to say? Uh, uh, just Quarkus demo, and then uh, just back to the my ID tool and change my project. Uh, Quarkus demo here and now I'm in the right project in a Maven package just simple command line I don't need to I don't need to add any parameter uh, when you uh, run this command line and uh, we're gonna test two case use cases because of the previous video so we learned about how to add the test cases in the Quarkus uh, application for uh, the Java uh, application also native executable here so in this case we have the uh, name and actually we use the mockup and also here's a couple of the test case and two test cases the one is just hello endpoint the other is hello hello greeting endpoint uh, using parameter all right you can see here the s2i the source to image process is uh, kicked up to create a container image and then uh, push it into internal uh, container registry inside OpenShift and then uh, uh, the OpenShift deployment uh, uh, scheduler uh, to decide which worker is the best place to pull down this new uh, uh, the application as a part and the deploy that thing Okay, back to the here. Oh, we already have one this one. So Quarkus application and click on that and I try to see uh, the view log and to run this application. So let's try to take a look at that. And the Quarkus is just running up. And here is a Kubernetes and the registry, OpenShift and uh, CDI cap capability. And also we gotta just need to point Six, uh, almost half a second to start up but at the first time we need to take some more time because we need to pull push and at the first time okay back to the uh, topology view and we already exposed this URL and click on the URL and this is a welcome page of the Quarkus I believe you already uh, saw this welcome page a couple of time and go to endpoint uh, let's say hello and I'm gonna make it bigger and hello and what about the greeting and the name is Daniel so hello Daniel okay let's try it one more time in a Quarkus and hello Quarkus and another endpoint the last letter and the parameter is Quarkus uh, error is coming up and maybe Okay, so I missed the uh, wrong API and hello in the last letter. 
um, last letter. Okay, S. And what about the maybe Daniel? Daniel and L. Maybe I'm gonna put the 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 um, mini, the another character and A should be cool, right? So. So this, uh, uh, I'm going to show you how to deploy your Quarkus application to run uh, FinJar using OpenShift uh, extension. So let's tr I'm going to show you another use case to deploy native compilation. But I'm going to use different, uh, the, uh, different uh, command line, like a new OC new app stuff. And I already pushed this code to into the external uh, source repository, the name the GitHub, and uh, this is uh, almost uh, exactly the same application from Quarkus Quick Start. So let's try to create a new project to uh, compare previous uh, the Java application and native comparison application. So create a new project using OC command, OC new project, and name the uh, native uh, what else? Quarkers uh, native demo, and uh, I'm gonna to uh, make it expand and OC new app, uh, and this one. So I'm gonna in this command line, I'm gonna to repair. I'm gonna use this. Okay, I'm gonna use the base image for native comparison as image, and uh, I'm gonna repair this. Uh, the application can be part of it and just run it. And in the meantime, go back to Opposite Console and change the project Quarkus Native. And this application just got started. And go to Low. So, as to our build, there are a multiple steps as necessary to build your application. First step is to uh, try to clone your source code from the external registry. For example, in this case, I specified uh, the github.com slash quarkus.io, quarkus quickstart the git repository. That's why the S2I process, uh, processor tried to clone this repository at first. Once you uh, clone this repository on your inside the builder part and then try to build uh, the Maven packaging stuff. So you can see here, so Maven package and uh, you, we're gonna use the native profile to build and package a uh, native comp executable file. And the first step is uh, as a normal way, as a usual way, uh, to download all necessary dependency from uh, Maven central repository, and then try to build the application to, and based on the native image, uh, the running on Gra VM here. So it takes uh, uh, a little bit longer than uh, the usual uh, Maven package to build your thin jar because the we uh, the Quarkus print the all necessary uh, features and library into your native executable file. For example. Uh, configuration and annotation parsing, descriptor parsing, and the scanning and loading static contents or something like that. So because the we we're not gonna use the dynamic behavior to run this native executable file because we're not gonna use the JVM as a runtime, but instead we will use GraVM to run this native compilation executable file. So that's why it takes a little bit longer than uh, uh, the uh, usual and general Maven packaging for your uh, the jar application. So first thing we build the uh, thin jar and, and, and then next step is uh, putting the all necessary uh, functionality into uh, executable file. So next step is to create the executable file. So it takes a couple of a sec a couple of more minutes and it the, the whole time totally depends on uh, how many dependencies you have in your uh, Quarkus application. For example, we just put in the REST easy uh, to have REST API, and also we put in the Kubernetes uh, extension to deploy this application into Kubernetes, uh, aka OpenShift Container Platform, and put under some Azure uh, and JUnit for testing capability as well. 
if you put in the more uh, quarter extensions such as uh, the camel for integration for backend server messaging server or Kafka or uh, Azure or uh, or the cloud or messaging and there are more than 200 podcast extension to have an enterprise application on Microsoft's capability. Okay, and back to the topology. So just try to uh, make some fun things stop here. So I'm going to click on and maybe add to uh, uh, label uh, app dot open shift dot dash runtime equal quarkers and save it and change this uh, uh, the eyeball candy icon uh, representative uh, as the uh, quarkers because the, uh, in the reality you have a lot of application as a part in the same name space and names same project which means maybe sometimes you need to differentiate it uh, with some uh, this is a nice icon Okay, uh, these two uh, part is a Spring Boot. Okay, this three part is a Quarkus. And this one part is Kafka. And this one part is a MongoDB or Postgres app. So it's a more good be, uh, visibility and readability. Okay, and back to the ID two, it's almost there. And let's try to view log uh, one more time and just go back to here. Okay, uh, just done, and uh, let's try to copy and paste to export this uh, OpenShift service and to access that from web browser, etc. And go to topology. Now you can see here open URL, and just one more time, click on a container is creating, and just right after we just need to maybe less than one second to start this application. Let's try to go to here. Now you're gonna see here. We just need to 17 milliseconds to actual startup time for Quarkus runtime because this is a native executable file. And back to the topology and I click on loud URL. We have the same welcome page. Go to hello. And uh, the same result, hello. And let's try one more time different let's put endpoint the uh, greeting and with the name like a uh, Dan. So hello there, it's the same wizard, but different uh, type of deployment. So first thing is deploy the, the your thin jar with running on JVM as a traditional uh, Java microservice application. And the other use case you could deploy native compilation, but both cases you're still using OpenShift extension. Uh, Quarkus provides, it's pretty easy and simple uh, to deploy your application from your ID tool like a VS Code, IntelliJ, Eclipse, or the NetBeans. So this is, uh, I'm pretty sure uh, this is functionality and feature uh, Quarkus provides uh, in the end uh, improve your uh, developer productivity and uh, it's, uh, increase your uh, the developer speed uh, to take care of the application development and deployment, even testing, debugging as well. Okay, uh, I think it's, uh, that's all I have, and thanks for watching.